take your Bibles this afternoon and turn with me to the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians and the fourth chapter. And as we said last week, we are ready for the 15th verse this week. Verse 15. Shall we read it? But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Probably all we'll get dealt with this week is the first phrase. But speak the truth in love. Speaking the truth. I remember as a child, my mother tried to teach us children to speak the truth. Versus lying. <laughs> and just a diminishing of the truth in the way any shape or form is to be blind. And then also with those instructions to speak the truth, Later on, with time, why well, I was speaking the truth, I was telling them the truth. And then came the admonitions to, but there's two ways to say everything. You see, many times we that which we say is truth, but we say it in a hard and a hurtful way. Versus saying it in a loving and compassionate way. Speak the truth in love. Turn with me the book of Zechariah. The book of Zechariah, in chapter 8. In verse 16. And we have here in this reading the admonition. These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gate. Speak every man the truth to his neighbor. Well, just the subject of truth today, <laughs> we would say, is there anyone who tells the truth, who speaks the truth? I mean, you look in the affairs of our country, the affairs of the world, and we basically have in this country, we have two parties. We have the Democratic Party and we have the Republican Party. And I listen to both sides and I say, Do, does any of them tell the truth? The admonition here was to speak the truth, every man, every one of us, 
to his neighbor, to everyone. Our verse, our text says, not only to speak the truth, but speak it in love. That presupposes that there's another way to speak the truth, which is not in love, which was what, what we were talking about at the beginning and in the introductory remarks. If we could only get this through to us, the world's not going to get it. But God's people, and especially the Lord's churches, ought to, ought to get this and ought to understand it. Amen. Love. Love always looks to the other person. Yes. Always. True love always looks to the other person. I wish I had gotten this. I wish I still got it. <laughs> then you understand what I mean by that. I'm not what I once was, thank God, but I'm not what I hope to be. You see, he's still working on me. <laughs> Love always looks to the other person. And love is always compassionate. Always. Even when we're speaking the truth, we're considering the other person and considering the other person, we speak to them with compassion. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm preaching to this fella here. I, I deal with probably that issue more than all the rest of you put together. Turn with me to the book of Colossians. And in fact, and I've, I'm sure I've shared this with you before, that because when I get excited, it doesn't matter what it is, my voice goes up several decibels, and you can it comes through in my preaching, the things I'm preaching and I'm excited about. <laughs> But because, as most people, if we have that face, if we're not smiling, we might give the appearance of looking mad. And, and that was really driven home to me when I worked at Walmart in the deli. And they would come up there, customers would come up there and they would say to one of my associates, What's he mad about? You know, you get the regular clientele, you know, and, and they kind of get to know you and, and stuff. Well, oh, that's just Seth. <laughs> you know, and, and the people I work with, they, they soon learn that, you know, when I'm intent on a, on a job or on a task that's before me, I'm all about that, I'm all about business, you know? And I say that because sometimes it might come across in, in my preaching that, that I'm mad. And I don't want, want anyone to think I'm mad. I'm just excited about the things that the Lord has given me to proclaim and to preach. I say that because we're to speak the truth in love. Being compassionate. Colossians chapter 4 <clears throat> and verse 6 really 
gives emphasis to this statement. It says, let your speech be always, that is, at all times, with grace. Think about that. Grace. <clears throat> Is that at the expense of truth? No, so there's no compromise in the truth. And the truth is to be spoken with grace. That word grace goes to compassion. If we if we have been blessed, enabled to grow in grace and knowledge as we're admonished to do, and that, which is is the subject of our text. In these verses, growing beyond the state of childhood, growing to adulthood, growing to maturity. If, if we've been blessed to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then most certainly we've learned the truth and are able. to speak the truth in love. You see, what I said in my introductory remarks, as a child, they have to be taught to speak the truth, and a child also has to be taught to, there's more, there's two ways, at least two ways to say it. One is hard and cold and, and not considering the other individual, and the other way is compassionate with love. And growing in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus, of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the Lord Jesus Christ, supposes, demands, that we'll learn the truth and we'll learn how to speak it in love, with compassion. Turn with me to the book of Matthew. A very familiar portion of scripture. Probably most everyone here can quote it. But especially Sunday afternoon, I like to take the time for our eyes to feast upon it as well as Wednesday evening. Sometimes for time constraint on Sunday morning, I quote the verses or at least have them wrote down and, and read through them, and then are, is selective about the passages we turn to. But Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, Take my yoke upon you, be yoked to me, and learn of me. What are we to do? <laughs> we're to be yoked to Jesus Christ, and we're to learn Him. We're to learn his ways. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons the Lord led me to start to going through the book of Matthew is so that we might see more of the ways of Jesus Christ. You, you want to see, see Jesus Christ? Well, we can get a good look at him in the Gospels. Yes. Amen. How, he, how he lived as a man upon earth. He said, learn of me, for I am meek, I am gentle of spirit, and lowly. <laughs> In other words, I don't rise up. I mean, he who was God, <laughs> he didn't rise up. 
against people, did he? And we shall find rest unrushed. Listen, if we follow our example, the Lord Jesus Christ, it'll be a restful life. It'll be a peaceful life. What is it? I think it's in the Psalms. He maketh even his enemies. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Amen. That's a peaceful life. If we do that which is pleasing to the Lord, so let's consider Jesus Christ. We're to speak the truth. What's the truth? Well, turn with me to the book of John. John chapter 1. John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. <laughs> and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. In other words, God was with God. God is God. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God. Amen. Verse 14. Let's see something else about the Word. And the Word was made flesh. Know that well, don't we? Amen. And dwelt among us. Yes. And we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father. We behold the Son of God, God in the flesh, the Word. Full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. As we think about the Son of God, as we think about the glory of God, as we think about Jesus Christ, as we think about the Word, He was full of grace and truth. As you follow him through the Gospels in his life as a man, we don't, we see him always speaking the truth, full of grace. Amen. He never, he never compromised the truth to be graceful, to be compassionate. But he was compassionate in speaking the truth. Amen. Wow. <laughs> and we're to do that. We're to do that. John 17, 17. Sanctify them. Make holy. That's what that word sanctify means. Same word as holy. Make holy them, make them holy through thy truth. Notice what the truth is. Thy word is truth. Amen. Now I know that's capital, not capitalized, but I'll tell you what, it's the same word, translated word, back there in John chapter 1, which is capitalized, which expounded to us that he was the word, the word is truth. So when I see this word in John 17, 17, <laughs> it's Jesus Christ. Amen. He's truth. Now, 
Let me show you something else that maybe you've forgotten about. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. Now pay attention to the language here. Yeah, I got too much writing in here. I can't find verse 13. Okay, there it is. I like to make notes. <laughs> and sometimes my notes are covering up part of the verse. You know, or they, or they just all run together. But verse 13. In whom ye also trusted... After that he heard the word of truth, talking about Christ, in whom we also trusted, after that we heard the word of truth, what is truth? Christ is truth. He's the word, Amen. and he's truth. The gospel, of your salvation, What's the gospel of our salvation here according to this verse? The truth. Christ. Christ Jesus. It's the gospel of Christ Jesus. Is anything beginning to click yet? Speak the truth in love. There's always two ways to preach the gospel to lost souls. One is hard and cold. One is in love and compassion. We're to do it in love and compassion. We're to speak the gospel. Not rising up but as Christ is gentle in spirit and lowly, <laughs> that's what we're to do. Look, I want to tell you something. All have sinned. All have sinned. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. But I'm here to tell you today. That through repentance of our sins towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ there is forgiveness Amen. of sins you see we're to do it in love and compassion considering the ones we're talking to looking love always looks to the other person Put yourself in their shoes. How do you like for people to speak to you? How do you like for people to deal with you? How do you like people to work with you? Well, you're to do that and more for them, you see. Chapter 4 of Ephesians. The verse that we'll be dealing with in a few weeks. Verse 21 says, If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, that's by Jesus Christ. Verse, verse 20 says, But ye have not so learned Christ. He's talking about Christ. If so be that ye have heard him, heard Christ, and have been taught by Christ as the truth is in Jesus Christ. Wow. Oh. That's something, isn't it? Amen. How have we learned Christ? That applies to, to, to verse 15. How have we learned Christ? You know, it, it would appear a lot of times by my dealings that that I haven't learned Christ very well yet. <laughs> I've got a lot to learn yet. I've got a long ways to go. <clears throat> it 
in love. Think about that, the truth. In love. How did we receive it? How did the truth come to us? Apart from the one who delivered it to us. How did it come to us? Love of the Father. Giving us to the Son. The Son giving his life to redeem us. It was all love. It came to us in love. We received it in love. And we're to speak it in love. Turn with me <clears throat> to 1 Corinthians. And, and now I remind you again that we are talking about growing. And as I've already said, I've got a lot of growth to do yet. Praise God, I'm not what I was. But I'm not yet what I hope to be either. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I hope you automatically ought to say, oh, that's the love chapter. Yeah. Look at verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand mysteries and am all and all knowledge and though I have all faith look where I've grown to look what I know look what I understand yes God has given it to me well brother God needs to give you love too You need to learn how to speak the truth in love. Isn't that what our text said? Isn't that what this verse says? I have all of that so that I could remove mountains and have not charity. I am nothing. I am no one. I haven't yet learned Christ. To the full, full extent. Turn with me also to the book of Ephesians. Again. And we'll be dealing with this in maybe a month or two. Or unless the Lord comes back, then he'll, he'll teach us this. <laughs> We're talking about growing in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, speaking the truth in love, just as, as he spoke the truth and spoke it in love. Verse 1 says in chapter 5, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. But now look concerning the second person of the Godhead. Jesus Christ and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savior we're to walk just as Christ walked and how did Christ walk he gave himself for us in love Which was a sweet smelling savor. Yes. Order. Sweet smelling order unto God. Amen. So, what's that say about saints? They're a sweet smelling order unto God. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ gave his life for them. Amen. And oh, the sweet savor, the, the, the sweet smell, the sweet odor that ascends up to the nostrils of God when we walk as Christ walked. Amen. 
I don't know about you, but that makes me want to be more Christ-like. Turn with me in closing. Back to one of the verses we started off with. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6. Let your speech be always at all times with grace. Seasoned with salt. <laughs> so it makes things more pal palatable. But I don't think it's tending to that. I think it's talking about it. here it's preserving effects here. You see, when, we, when our speech is at all times with grace, it has a preserving yes. effect. Amen. Know how you ought to answer every man. Oh, that we would speak the truth in law, let, allowing our speech to be always, at all times, with grace. Yes, to all men. That means even when they do something we don't like, something that is definitely against us, even when I'm driving down the road and this idiot cuts off and passes me in the left-hand turn lane and then cuts me off. So he can get through that intersection ahead of me. My speech is to be with grace. <laughs> wow. Shall we stand? Be dismissed in a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the example of the Lord Jesus Christ that we have in your word. And that is the desire, or ought to be the desire of everyone that names the name of Christ to be more like him. Oh Lord, especially as we're talking about this, this issue of speech, our speech and the preaching of the gospel. And Lord, may it be always with grace at all times to all people therefore manifesting that we are the children of God be with us as we leave this place give us safety and health until we meet again whether it be in the air or whether it be at the next appointed time Wednesday evening. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And amen.